if uh, this is clear, then we can discuss another uh, uh, case, uh, which is related to diatomic basis. Basically, in diatomic basis, uh, the same case, it is the similar example, uh, but now basis is diatomic. What is the meaning of this is that, okay, if this is the lattice, suppose this is the lattice point, these small spheres, let us assume small dots are representing our lattice this one so that what is the lattice constant it is shown here the lattice constant is a okay because this is the lattice and uh, the separation between any two lattice points is called lattice constant in 1d at least it is simple now suppose basis is diatomic you have two types of atoms one atom sitting exactly at the lattice point one small atom there is another atom some big size atom this is constituting your basis like the ones shown here fine so that's what constitutes your crystal so the whole crystal is uh, now like this okay you have smaller uh, atoms and bigger atoms or a type atom and b type atom something like this it's something like uh, we can call uh, uh, a crystal of say for example sodium chloride one dimensional crystal it's not 3d case but we want to now consider what is the effect of basis on atomic vibrations this is a simple again prototype example which will illustrate the things to us again uh, we will uh, use newtonian equations of motion so this is the equation of motion suppose us the notations of the previous uh, article uh, retains themselves here uh, but uh, we will have something new here. Suppose US is now representing the displacement for uh, this bigger atom or A type atom and VS is representing the uh, uh, displacement for second type of atom. So we have now two types of displacements, US and VS. And hence, accordingly, we have two equations of motion. This is one equation of motion, how it comes. It's uh, identical to that in the previous case. But here now we have Vs, Vs minus 1 and Us as well sitting. So this is the equation of motion for this case, this atom, rather uh, Us. And uh, I'm sure you can get it. So the, the notice one thing that uh, the force constant is C here again. So, I mean, uh, doesn't matter whether interaction is to this side or to uh, this side, I mean, right hand side, the force constant will be C because interaction is between same kind of atoms. This is suppose A type of atoms. And suppose this is a B type of atoms. Then uh, to both, end si both sides, uh, interaction is of a b type so interaction is a b type means force constant will remain same i mean the bond between say for example sodium and chlorine will have same strength as the bond between chlorine and sodium that's uh, the, the the physical way of looking at it so this will be the equation of motion uh, similarly uh, suppose capital m1 is the mass for this bigger atom again represented here m2 be the mass for second atom smaller atom let us say so this is uh, accordingly going to be the equation of motion for second atom are you comfortable with these, these equation of motion i mean uh, can you uh, get these yes sir okay so yes, sir. if these are equations of motion then we will assume for uh, uh, the solutions, the solutions are going to be of this kind. Again, the idea follows from the previous lecture. The, the details have been discussed there. So this is the, this is going to be the kind of uh, total solution. So this is space with dependent part, this portion. And this portion is time dependent part. Okay. For US, similarly, you have uh, uh, the solution for this equation to be of this kind. This is not V2. This is Vs. There is a typo here. Uh, I mean, okay, this S is so weird here. But anyway, it is Vs. Okay. So now if we substitute these solutions, these two solutions in these equations, 
equation say let us say 1 and uh, equation 2 we will obtain two uh, different equations in u and v where u v are representing the amplitudes of these oscillations uh, right this solution so uh, uh, again i am sure you can get this done uh, their exponential term is going to remain common throughout uh, on the both both sides e raised to the power iota omega t and when you take the derivative somewhere uh, uh, you will be uh, also left with the, this thing e raised to the power iota s i mean okay with the derivative this thing comes and this cancels on both sides this term indeed 1 plus e raised to the power minus iota ka so this follows from simplification of these two terms so vs vs similarly us also have e raised to the power iota ska this will also be common on both hand sides uh, when we we simplify these two terms vs and vs minus 1 then we will be left with one term like this i'm sure again you can do this yourself as a homework again left to you similarly second equation uh, simplifies to this form uh, again that you can do so now these two equations uh we need to look at these and their solution to uh, further arrive at uh, omega versus k so this this these two equations are indeed homogeneous equations in uh, linear equations rather in u and v seen as variable so there is u here there is v here there is u here multiplying and so on same in the second case so this is a system of uh, homogeneous linear equations and this will have a non trivial solution only when uh, the coefficient matrix vanishes and uh, i'm sure you can see from here uh, that what will be the coefficient matrix again i leave it to you but yes that turns out to be the coefficient matrix okay let me give you small time maybe 2 minutes time you quickly write down the uh, coefficient matrix and put its determinant to be equal to 0 and let me know if you get it this way or not yes do it quickly as a uh, small task right now and then once it is done just let me know oh oh sorry so the equations are on your screen you have to write down the coefficient matrix and put its determinant to be equal to 0 once it is done let me know okay shreya got it let me see one or two more responses if it is uh, okay for others as well right very good so you all got it that's great so that's going to be the uh coefficient matrix you match it if it is uh, i hope it should be matching oh, oh just a minute there is some mm, oh okay maybe i missed it 
actually this thing should be equal to zero right uh, okay let me quickly try to put it this way animations this So nine should go to two. Yeah. So uh, that's what we are actually talking that this thing should be indeed equal to zero for uh, uh, having a non trivial solution. So if we again simplify this, that again is uh, just a simple task of uh, cross multiplying things and simplifying this, you will arrive at this equation. I again assume you can get it done. It's it's going to be small, uh, um, rather I would say rearrangement work that you can do. And now this equation is uh, uh, quadratic equation in omega square, not in omega, but it is quadratic equation in omega square. Means sort of uh, bi quadratic omega raised to the power four omega square and this. And now you can solve this equation for omega square. The general solution we you can obtain that's not very difficult. I mean minus b plus minus under root of b square minus four ac over two a. Right? I'm sure you are familiar with that. But now here we will be looking at two special cases which are of uh, interest to us. Rather, if when you will solve this equation from there you can get omega versus k in general. Right? Because omega square will come out to be equal to something in terms of k and m1 and m2 right so from here you can get that general omega versus k uh, that's not worked out in kit 11 but you can do it that's not a very big task so that's why they have left it to the students uh, the good thing is that okay let us try to consider two special cases one is a long wavelength limit again k a being very very less than one and second is la, la, small wavelength limit that is k a to be uh, equal to plus minus pi or k being equal to plus minus pi by a means k at the Brillouin zone boundary, right? So these are two uh, extreme cases of uh, special relevance. So out of that first one is uh, small k, let us uh, assume the case of small k a, then we can simplify in that case cos of k a to be given by this again that long series for cos function but we have uh, ignored higher order terms so up to this if we retain then the two roots of this equation you have to put cos of ka uh, equal to this thing that will follow from here and then in the those two general roots okay i'm giving it as an assignment to you so this task of obtaining general omega versus k is left as an assignment to you. You will have to upload it. I will uh, uh, create an assignment today itself. Then from there, you have to put uh, this special case, cos k a being this thing. Then you have to obtain this omega square is equal to two c over uh, into one over m one plus one over m two. This specific case is called or known as optical branch of the atomic vibrations. Uh, and interesting thing is that this here omega is not depending upon k, right? This is a small uh, wavelength limit, yeah, small k limit. Sorry, large wavelength limit. And second case follows from uh, the same thing. We will be getting uh, the second value of omega square because this equation is bi quadratic. So we will be having two values of omega square, right? Just like for quadratic equation, we have two values of uh, solution. So these will be two solutions. One of the solution will be corresponding to what we call the optical branch. Other solution will turn out to be equal to this one, which we call the acoustical branch. Here we have omega versus k dependence. So from here you can see omega is directly proportional to k. Omega square is proportional to k square. So omega is directly proportional to k. So these two branches are something interesting and are characteristic features of a diatomic or polyatomic basis in a uh, for the crystals having polyatomic basis. So in diatomic basis, we can see uh, 
conceptual overview of this in polyatomic case it can be rather more complex let us see another situation uh, other another extreme situation that is small wavelength limit means uh, k max highest value of k is plus minus pi by a again when you put that in this equation things will simplify now again that is all a task uh, i'm leaving it as an assignment to you so basically your task begins after this equation you have to solve this quadratic equation then put these special cases obtain this again do this here and uh, uh, then you will obtain that there will be two solutions again for uh, k max means at the zone boundaries the omega versus k is going to be given by these two values omega square again here you can see at zone boundaries there is no k dependence right okay if we see the plots that's how these are going to look like so now if you take that general solution which you will obtain after solving this equation this quadratic equation and try to plot that in the first brillian zone then you will be finding the solutions are going to look like this so this is this is our acoustical phonon branch so this is small wavelength limit in this region you can see there are two branches you know when k was approaching zero there were two solutions one was optical solution other was acoustical so another solution this solution was linearly dependent upon k you can see omega was linearly depending upon k you can see here omega square is proportional to k square so omega is proportional to k that's what is seen here this is your that acoustical branch for low wave vector because this is k axis right so this is low wave vector limit uh, or high wavelength limit another branch was this one uh, and this interestingly you can see was independent of k right so k dependence was not there for the optical branch you can see this here also here this curve is almost parallel to k axis so you can see that there is no dependence of, of optical branch on k but not always only in a uh, large wavelength limit or long wavelength limit in between of course there is a k dependence of optical branches uh, optical branch but near uh, large wavelength limit or near uh, k approaching zero this is not there another thing which is uh, uh, to notice is that at zone boundaries there were two solutions one was for optical branch other was for acoustical branch so that these are these two are following so omega square uh, 2c over m1 and omega square 2c over m2 now depending upon whether m1 is greater than m2 so now if m1 is greater than m2 then you can see that this term is going to be smaller 2c over m1 m1 is greater because so this term is going to be smaller so that's why uh, that's that that comes here and another case is uh, uh, m uh, i mean another branch will come here so that represents omega versus k or phonon dispersion for a case of diatomic basis uh, is this clear up to this point or any question uh, is this okay any query any question any confusion okay fine so here are two examples again i have taken these examples from kittel you can see uh, this uh, curve is representing experimental measurement of omega versus k for germanium at uh, 80 kelvin so you can see there are two uh, uh, acoustical modes one transverse acoustical you know Uh, the c you know this c sorry this c is going to assume different values for different kind of uh, vibration modes right so for transverse acoustic transverse modes c is going to be different and hence we will have a different branch here coming out like this transverse acoustical branch and there will be another uh, longitudinal branch Uh, longitudinal acoustical branch 
and there will be indeed two transverse acoustical branches but that both are degenerate it depends upon the structure so if structure is uh, a cubic kind of structure then uh, transverse branches will be degenerates in some cases there may be two different transverse branches maybe branching out like this ta1 and ta2 uh, uh, but for this specific case they are degenerate then there is a longitudinal acoustical branch similarly there will be transverse optical transverse optical branch and longitudinal optical branch for germanium so it has why this because germanium has a diatomic basis i hope you remember that germanium has diamond like structure so that's why that kind of uh, analysis would be valid for uh, this situation okay this is measured in 1 1 1 direction you will ask okay the uh, analysis which we discussed was for one dimensional crystal why we are doing uh, or why, how we can compare the two because this is a 3d structure so basically once we fix the direction along which we want to measure the wave vector means k direction uh, if you follow uh, or come back to this once you fix this k you are fixing the things for that one dimensional lattice i mean we will assume that along one 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 direction interatomic spacing is going to be something specific for that particular crystal and then uh, accordingly things will follow like that so that's what is the case here uh, as i told so that's one 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 case okay i mean measured along one 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 direction so if you go along a different direction in a crystal omega versus k will have a different dependence this is another example of uh, a potassium bromide now here again in this case uh the atoms were identical okay in this case atoms are different potassium and bromine uh then in this in this case you can find out that uh these are the uh, because it's not possible to take data points this also probably is some interpolation of the data but this is how uh, you can try to see some longitudinal optical branch transverse optical branch maybe going like this uh this is just for your visualization i am helping longitudinal acoustical branch transverse acoustical branch then data is taken only up to this if you have to go to long wavelength limit you may have to extrapolate the data and then accordingly see how will this come so that's another thing validating this idea uh, of uh, our uh, phonon dispersion that this theoretical idea is successful at least qualitative uh, uh, features of the omega versus k are similar and you see uh, experimentally all these features which are uh, discussed in this theoretical model uh is this again clear yes sir right so now yes, you may have another question that how we actually count the uh phonon branches and usually you find out uh, one question in ugc net exam even from this kind of uh, uh statements so this is something really interesting so how does those branches follow how many optical how many acoustical branches will be there so if you have a, a, a total uh, if you have a primitive cell if you have a crystal which contains n primitive cells size of the crystal i mean uh, suppose there is one primitive so 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 our crystal is made up of n unit cells rather primitive cells and there are p atoms in each unit cell each primitive cell then total number of atoms in the crystal are going to be p into n right each atom is going to have 3 degrees of freedom corresponding to of course x y z so that total degrees of freedom for a crystal containing n unit cells and p atoms in each unit cell will be 3 into p into n correct now the number of allowed modes uh, in single branch will be n in one brillian zone now this again uh, we will be discussing in the next unit so i i don't uh, talk that in detail here 
but yes uh, just as you uh, this is some standard thing <coughs> if you have any unit cells in the crystal then number of independent modes uh, or number of independently allowed values of k in first brillouin zone will be n for each branch okay uh, we will discuss this in detail because that requires somewhat more time and it will follow up in the next unit so i didn't uh, put this here for now we will just assume that each branch will have n independent modes okay therefore the longitudinal acoustical and therefore the longitudinal acoustical and two transverse acoustical branches have total 3n modes so out of 3p n modes out of oh where is the cursor okay out of these 3p n modes 3n modes will be reserved for what one uh, longitudinal acoustical branch and two uh, transverse acoustical branches why there will be one longitudinal acoustical branch you know there is only one mode of longitudinal vibration along k vector and there will be two transverse modes means perpendicular to uh, the k vector there will be two mutual perpendicular directions uh, perpendicular to k vector so that's what are referring to the two transverse acoustical branches thereby counting 3n of the total degrees of freedom so means there will be total 3n degrees of freedom reserved for longitudinal acoustical and transverse acoustical modes so the remaining modes that is 3p n minus 3n or 3p minus 3 into n degrees of freedom are actually accommodated in optical branches so how many degrees of freedom are corresponding to the optical branches how many of degree degrees of freedom corresponds to the acoustical branches that you can obtain from this simple uh, idea or this simple uh, um, numbers some simple set of numbers is this clear how to get uh, different degrees of freedom in different uh, branch modes yes sir yes sir right so now let us uh, uh, substitute i hope you remember this thing we had uh, obtained in previous slide omega square is this if we substitute these values in these this set of equations then what we can obtain again simplification business left to you this will result into u over v equal to minus m2 over m1 and this one was corresponding to optical branch ye kiske liye tha optical branch ke liye tha optical branch okay so what does this mean physically m1 is positive m2 is positive masses are going to be positive this means u is equal to minus of v means for optical branches the displacement of sth atom u is representing uh, displacement for sth atom and v is representing its nearby neighbor so the displacements are opposite to each other so that if one atom is going upwards other would be going downwards so this is a typical representation of optical uh, motion or optical branch what kind of atomic oscillations must be going in optical branch so this is representing the wave ve wavelength this one and then uh, this is how atoms are uh, oscillating so you can see this atom is at zero uh, and then maybe going upwards but this atom is going downwards uh similarly this is at maximum this is at minimum this is now going upwards and so on so that is optical mode of uh atomic vibrations uh second is acoustical mode of uh, uh atomic vibrations you can see this one here so that's how you can see atoms must be uh vibrating or oscillating this is wavelength so the atoms are actually nearby atoms are in phase here they are moving opposite to each other okay so this is acoustical mode in general uh, for any general value of k 
u over v will be complex i mean if you substitute the general solution the results are going to be complex but okay that's not uh, i mean we don't need to get into that uh, as of now uh, as per our course uh, the scope of this course this much is sufficient uh, uh i think that's all for today because th there is something called quantization of elastic waves uh, we better uh, will discuss it uh, in the next class because uh, we are now short of time and won't have sufficient time to complete this so well that's all for today uh, is there any question from overall lecture which we uh, discussed today any question any confusion any query <coughs> nothing no, no sir fine then uh, sign your attendance that's it